Let's take a look at the Butterworth filter magnitude response as well as the four filter types that you can create from this response. Let's begin with the basic equation for the magnitude response. This is m for magnitude, sub lp for low pass, and it's a function of frequency omega. It has this characteristic form, 1 over radical 1 plus frequency divided by the cutoff frequency, also known as corner frequency, that's omega c, and then n is the filter order. Let's get a sense of how this looks in terms of a graph. The response begins at 1, and then the cutoff frequency ends up being a critical frequency value. For a value of 0 for frequency, that would be the DC response, we see that we have 1 divided by 1 plus 0, and that's 1. Next, if we have omega being equal to the cutoff frequency exactly, that places us right here on the graph. For this case, we see 1 divided by square root of 1 plus 1 to the 2n, and that's always 1 no matter the value n. That gives us 1 divided by square root of 2, which is approximately equal to 0.707. That value is right about here and the response starts to fall off and then pass through that value. For large values of omega, then we find that we have essentially 1 divided by square root of 1 plus a very large value, and that always boils down to approximately 0. Filling in the gaps here, we see the smooth curve that has this form. Now as n becomes increasingly large, it still comes to the same exact point every time for the cutoff frequency, but the rate of change becomes more steep as we have a higher filter order. So we can control the sharpness of the response with the filter order n. We can also get a high pass response by taking 1 and subtracting the low-pass low response. Let's take a quick look at the sketch of that. You can start with 1 at DC. We would have 1 minus 1. That starts us out at 0. We have our crossover point right here. And then as the low pass response tails off towards 0, the high pass response heads towards 1. Now we can get a band pass response, that is something that only has significant values at some center frequency. We can get that by taking the same exact form but changing or shifting the frequency at which the argument looks close to omega c. So we can do it this way. I'm modifying the argument for omega by changing it to omega minus omega naught. Let's see why this works. If omega is very small compared to omega naught, then we have a rather large value here. That gives us 1 divided by square root of a large number, and that's essentially 0. And similarly, if omega is much larger than omega naught, we also have a considerably large value here, giving us, again, a zero response. When omega is approximately equal to omega naught, then we've got something that looks like a very small value here. And in that case, we get a maximum response of ultimately getting to 1. Therefore, we only pass frequencies about the center frequency omega naught. In the same way that we got a high pass from a low pass, we can get a band stop from a band pass response. Our fourth filter type, therefore, is created this way. Call this m sub bs for band stop. That's a function of omega again. That will be 1 minus our band pass response, m sub bp of omega. 
All right, there you have it. The four different filter types, all created from the same low-pass Butterworth equation.